So the first set of questions I have here, we've received from Pat Doherty. They will be particularly pertinent for yourself, Peter and Michael Moran. Um, the first question I have is, will the process for the expert health certification requirements from Ireland to, be, uh, to Great Britain be a fully virtual process? Or will it require boots on the ground? It, w it may require some boots on the ground, but not for every cert. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, because the second question is a uh, follow-up to that really. It's will every pallet being loaded for transfer to Great Britain be required to be witnessed by a Department of Agriculture official or veterinary personnel? No. It won't require to be witnessed. Similarly, the third question is will the sealing of every container being transferred to GB require Department of Agriculture supervision? And um, The sealing of containers is something that is um, from the 1st of April uh, the UK will be doing remote documentary checks only and um, so the sealing of containers won't be an issue immediately but at some stage the UK will start uh, examining loads at their border inspection posts and um, if a load it's not a requirement for the load to be sealed but uh, if it's not sealed, it could be subject to a 100% identity check, in which case the UK Customs and uh, Department of Agriculture over there will unload the truck and do a 100% identity check on all the commodities and products within, and then reload the truck, truck and that can take up to five hours. So uh, we would recommend that uh, uh, loads be sealed. After, certainly after the 1st of July. Peter, um, then I see the first, the next question from Pat was, will the transfer of the expert health certificate paperwork to GB an entirely virtual process or will it require actual physical paperwork to accompany the load? Yeah, um, at the moment um, the, um, it is an, an EU and a UK requirement that the original cert accompany the load. That is going to create enormous difficulties, certainly for satellite plants that do not have a permanent presence. Uh, we are in negotiations with the UK on COVID easement, uh, which would mean that an electronic copy of the cert can accompany the load with the original following on in due course. Um, so that is the current, that's what we're aiming to do, to have uh, an electronic copy, and in, in other words, a photocopy of the the cert to accompany the, the load. But the e, the export health certificate should accompany the load, um, and hopefully we can uh, get around this particular requirement where the UK require the original cert to go with the load. If that is the case, there's going to create enormous difficulties for everybody. Thanks, Jerry. And the final question from this set of questions from Pat, and I, I'm just, I'm not sure if this is an exactly, I think this might be a misinterpretation on your part, Pat Doherty. It's, can any improvements be made on the 24 hour turnaround time for applying for expert health certificates on traces, or will it be up to 24 hours? So I think that's in relation to the traces NT, that's the CHED requirement, not the expert health certificate requirement, but I'll leave that to Peter and Michael. Um, yeah, well, the other thing is that, as far as I know, there's a 24-hour notification requirement to the UK for IPAFs. Uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But it, there is not a 24-hour notification request for a certificate from us. The, the UK haven't um, um, determined yet what their pre-notification period will be. Originally, last summer, they had outlined um, you could apply up to 30 days in advance, but at least 24 is in advance. But they've pulled back a little bit from this and it hasn't yet been clarified on the submission of the pre-notification to the IPAP system. Um, regarding the uh, pre-notification of the of products of animal origin going across the land bridge into France, there is a requirement for pre-notification using Traces NT on a, using a shed for that. And I think they, they would like 24 hours for that. Okay. Thank you, Maria. And
Following on from that question, actually, we have a question from um, uh, Patrick Hughes here. Is it up to the importer or us as the exporter? This will be for you, Maria. Uh, is it up to us as the importer or the, or sorry, is it up to the importer in the GB or us as the exporter to notify IPATHs? Um, the UK um, have expressed a preference uh, that uh, registered users of IPAPs be GB resident and they would prefer if an agent, uh, a resident agent for in GB was, um, was, was, uh, was used to register an IPAPs if the GB importer wasn't in a position to do so. And we would also need um, uh, an agent to register an IPAPs for land bridge travel. That's the UK's preferred approach at the moment. Um, that's what they've been. That's the message that they're sending out. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question here from uh, Katrina Cahill. It's most shipments to the UK are being conducted under DPP. Hence, the consigner is also the consignee in the UK. How will that be dealt with? Kevin, could you please come in on that? This was the this was question. Uh, do you have to set which one was this, Jared? For two from Katrina. Question two from Katrina Cahill. It's uh, most shipments to the UK are being conducted under DPP. Hence, the consigner is also the consignee in the UK. So the question here relates to: Can the consigner be a GB establishment, given that they are not in the EU and therefore will not have access to traces? No. If they, they they can be put up as a consignee, uh, yes, by by the uh, FBOs themselves, they cannot be put up as the consigner because they are not um, an EU FBO premises. And if I may continue from that, Jared, another question that Katrina asked earlier, and I see it has come up here again with um, Jared Hughes. I'm nearly sure. Um, oh, sorry, Jared McCallie. Where you enter the identification, the lorry registration uh, on the front of the, uh, the on the transport section of the FBO, that is only applicable. You must put it in uh, as because it's going say to one, an Irish port, Larn, Belfast, Dublin, or Rosslare. Now, the tr the fridge, the load can be dropped there. Once it leaves the island of Ireland. It's not our concern what identification is on it. But when the lorry arrives, when the unit arrives in the port, the officers, the Department of Agriculture officers in the port must be able to identify it with the unit that it came in with. I hope that clarifies that. Um, another question there that I then saw was, do you have to set up all customers and consignees for them to come up. Yes, you do. Uh, that's the all the consigners and consignees that were on traces classic up to this for GB are now gone. So we're starting from scratch again. Um, can I add two consignees as there are two importers in the UK or do we need to request two AHCs? You can um, if there's two different consignees if they're two different importers, they're going to two different places of destination, then you have to have two separate export health certificates for those. So each place of destination must have a separate, it can be the same consignee, e.g., I'm just using an example, Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's is a, is a big company in Britain, a supermarket chain, but they will have various destinations. So if, we have, if you have product going to two different uh, yeah. destinations, then you must have two separate health certs for each destination. Um, the last one then. Uh, this question I think I've already answered. It, it's the number seven. If I have a, I have a, if you are using a courier for a small item, e.g., smoked salmon, and the container number. Uh, uh, it's from Stephen O'Brien, I think. Yeah, if the load is being dropped in the bo at the boat on the boat and picked up by a tractor in the port of UK, what reg do you enter? You enter the registration of the vehicle that's bringing it 
to Dublin, to the port, the Irish port, the exit point. That's what goes in there. So, Kevin, the question Thank is... Very much, Kevin. If, if you're using a courier for a small item, there, there will be no container number. So what do you enter into that? Peter, I honestly don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, no, that's an answer, a question I'm not able to... That is, the, we, will, we will answer that question. <laughs> we will have to do some research. Okay, there will be questions that we will not be able to answer, but we will try and provide an answer on the Frequently Asked Questions document, which is up on the website, as Michael has stated. Okay, Kevin. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter and Kevin. Um, the next question I have here is from Cora Murphy. It's a hi. I'm just asking on behalf of a R and D centre who use store bought materials from sample creation. Will they need to change these ways of working in order to have a slaughter number for traces? Cora, you may need to send us more information on that question as to the specifics of the question unless somebody here is feels they may be able to take it, but I think more information may need be needed. Great, yeah. Yeah, Cora, I think you might need to send that on to us with more information. Um, then I see a question here from uh, Joe Ryan. In many cases, the truck reg number or the trailer fridge number won't be known until the truck arrives for loading. Are those fields mandatory? Kevin, could you take that, please? Yes, uh, because when the, the container, when the tractor unit with the container arrives into the port in question, I'm going to use for the remainder of this discussion, I'm going to use Dublin Port as my example. Now, equally, it can be Ross Lair, Belfast or Lair. When the tractor unit arrives into Dublin Port, the certificate will be checked there by a veterinary inspector. So what the veterinary inspector will do is the driver will hand the certificate to the inspector, he'll walk around to the front of the lorry and he'll see this is the number that's on it. The lorry will then drop the fridge there and one of the port tractor units will pull it up onto the boat. After that, it's not our concern. But it must have uh, the identification entered for when it enters our Irish port. Um, the next question is in regards to groupage. How will this work for groupage consignments that goes to a depot to become part of a full groupage load for the UK, which is up to 10 or 12 consignments for a singular load? Michael yeah. and Peter? Um, yeah, we're, we, no, no decisions have been taken on exactly how groupage is going to work. Um, we, would, we, we will either, two options are there, and we may use a combination whereby um, a, a, an original EHC will be uh, created at each of the pickup points and they will then all accompany the load R. Uh, there will be, a, we would use the, that's called a linear uh, model, or we'll use the com consolidation model where all of the consignments will be um, certified at the final point um, of loading. But it depends on also on the combination of commodities that are in the consignment and all sorts of things so but we haven't made any final decisions on how uh, groupage is going to work because it's something that we actually have not done an awful lot of because of it's it's you know when we're certifying at the moment it's going to third countries it leaves from one point or cold store and goes so this pickup uh, store stuff and some of the other stuff I see coming in and questions is is unfamiliar territory for us so we have to work out a workable way uh, of doing it efficiently. Okay, Jared. Number 12. I so the next two questions I can actually um, deal with myself. Yeah, so number 12 uh, is from Ashling Joyce. Um, it relates to the CSV file that we used to upload the uh, commodities in the identification of commodities box, which is 1.25 on the traces system. Ashling, the question was, uh, hi, if you're going to upload uh, the file as per the example, can that be used? Can that upload be used to generate all of the consignment details? Unfortunately, no. 
the only the only information that is uploaded onto the traces website is that box 1.25 the identification of commodities the facility to upload information onto the traces website the traces classic website for the generation of export health certificates is quite limited so the only capacity that you have to upload information is upload the commodities into that box and then the next question i see here i will field as well it's from brian horrigan um, it's if you are registered on traces NT, nt do you still need to do this on classic so i will feel that because there is two separate functions um at the minute on traces the trace classic traces classic is used for the generation of export health certificates if you require an export health certificate it is absolutely vital that you are registered on traces classic um, to be registered on traces classic you submit your details to the Department of Agriculture. There was an email address posted earlier. It's traces-vphis, vphis-reg at agriculture.gov.ie. You must send or, or identify your FBO and supply us staff names so that you may be registered on Traces Classic for the purpose of creating export health certificates. Traces NT primarily is used currently for the creation of common health entry documents they are required for product that is transiting GB as a land bridge however we would like to stress that it is of vital importance that all food business operators register themselves on traces NT because the database of registered establishments on NT will be handed to the great British um, authorities and it was that database on NT that will be used to go through the port in GB. So I would just like to say that to you, that it is vital that you register on NT. You may not need to use the site unless you're creating a common health entry documents, but registration is of vital importance. So the next question then I have here is from Dervla Shanahan. It's 15 in the chat for the presenters. It's, hi, what would happen if a container is dropped to a port by one truck, goes onto a boat, then collected by a different truck on another site, so the vehicle registration numbers will not match. That's, I think Kevin uh, has already dealt with that. You only need to uh, put in the truck number of the, that's, of the truck that's bringing the um, container or the trailer to the port. You missed um, 14. Jared. Sorry, yeah, 14 was just related to groupage as well, but I will bring that in. Sorry, Katrina Cahill um, asked, for groupage shipments, can the product be certified from the FBO's facility, consolidate, consolidated and nominated transporters' premises with other EHC consignments and shipped on to multiple destinations in the UK? In this instance, again, the final transport details will not be known or cannot be provided at the point that the FBO is creating the upload on traces, how will such shipments be dealt with? As far as I can see from that example there, that the all of the certificates will have to be generated at the departure point because there's too many unknowns in between. Different containers, they're going to a, a one consolidation centre. So the consolidation centre is the place from which they will be certified. Um, that's that, that's the best answer I can give to that. Uh, can I come in there? There may be there may be a, a solution in the offering about that, but I can't confirm it's in place just yet. Um, in that, it it may be acceptable um, to have different numbers on the health cert um, if you're using the groupage model, where the health cert is generated um, at each um, uh, food business. Um, point of exit and um, to go to um, another um, a cold store or to go somewhere to be consolidated um, and that if the final truck number is actually put on the IPAS um, notification um, that GB may accept the disparity between the number that will be on the health search and the number that would be um, uh, that the that the commodities would be of the truck that the commodities would be arriving on, but we haven't got final agreement on that just yet. But that is um, a potential solution to that that would allow the uh, linear groupage model to work. But we're still working on that with GB authorities at the moment. 
كويس much lower up um the next question here sorry question 18 is uh has been answered so if the organizers could look at question 19 from deirdre Atridge, it's if i store my product in a cold store and that is the point i dispatch to the uk does that cold store need to be a daffin or sorry an approved establishment it, it it needs to be registered on traces if because the cert will be generated there um and if it's not a DAFM approved establishment, then um, it won't have DAFM veterinary um, cover. So, you know, there there may be issues there. If it's a local authority plant, the local authority veterinary inspectors will be um, certifying that product. So I'll just reiterate on that point. It is vital that you register on Traces NT as that will be the list of registered establishments that will be handed to Great British authorities um, for goods being imported into the UK, or sorry, to Great Britain. So register on Traces NT at the very least for that. Um, then the next question is uh, question number 20. Sorry, that's from Ashley Joyce. It's about a courier. Kevin has dealt with that. We will move to question 21 from Katrina Cahill. It's how will a CMR with dual temps, uh, which is chilled and frozen, be dealt with? Michael? No, um, this, the, the, the certificate is capable of, um, it, all, all of the fresh meat certificates are capable of handling you can tick the box fresh or chilled, sorry, and frozen, okay? But but we won't certify that product unless the the compartments there are separated compartments on the transport, um, because the the frozen has to be fro in a frozen compartment and the chilled has to be in a chilled compartment. Um, but we will certify that if if the um, container is compartmentalized. And it's easy to tick the boxes on the certificate. There's no problem there. That's in that question is also has come up in the FAQ. Um, just there is um, um, question number eighteen. Here. Just it says, I missed the start of this webinar. Do I need to register on Traces Classic as I'm already registered in Traces NT? Um, if you want export health certificates, you have to register on Traces Classic. That's okay. That's Sorry, go ahead, Jared. Peter, yeah. So, and then I have a question here, number 22 from Ashley Joyce. Uh, how do we manage if the export is going to a home, i.e. if the customer is an individual, not a business? Kevin? Uh, right. Of course. We have always recommended in a case like that, particularly for live shipments, uh, say, of live animals, e.g. dogs going to Britain, that you put in uh, the approval number as GB and the air code and the postal code as their approval number. That is what is done there. That way then, when the authorities get it, they can actually, with the postal code, they can actually find the premises. So put in GB as in Great Britain and put in the postal code. Of the individual home. Of the individual home. Yeah. Okay, Thank you Jared. very much, Kevin. Um, number 23, uh, question number 23 for the organisers. Um, it's from Connor Nyan. Um, we are currently moving poultry product in groupage via our contracted transporter who also handles the customs clearance declarations with the revenue, etc. Effectively, our total consignment is delivered to the department approved cold store in Port Leash. It is then broken down into smaller lots depending on order requirements across possibly three trailers or more with other products, pork, beef, also potentially on the same trailer. Who in the chain alerts Daphne to generate the export health certificate, the cold store or the FBO? Oh, sorry, and then I repeat the question. But who in the who in the chain alerts Daphne, the cold store or the FBO is the question there from Connor. In in general, um, from my experience of working with cold stores, it's the cold store who manages the certification out of the cold store, and they will be the the body that will notify the department. Um, but 
you know, it can be either either as long as they're talking to one another and they're not uh, contradicting one another, then it doesn't matter. But usually it's the cold store that emails, uh, even for current certification requirements are the cold stores. They are the the um, entity that contacts the department. Okay. Number 24, Jared. Next question I have here is Joe Ryan. Um, I can actually feel this one myself. Um, Joe has asked, if the VI rejects the consignment and traces, will all the details still be there for the FBO to amend and resubmit, or does this mean starting a new entry? So, Joe, on the traces webpage, when you see that a consignment has been rejected, it will be noted as status rejected. What you must do then, or what you have the facility to do, is copy as new. There will be a button underneath the certificate reference number, copy as new. That will copy the details that were in that cert exactly, um, which you can then edit to correct. Um, and that copy as new function can be used um, for assignments that were actually generated correctly and validated. So I would highly recommend getting uh, familiar with the copy as new function, but for consignments that are rejected, copy as new is how you amend uh, the record. So then I have a question number 25 uh, for the organisers from Paul Galuli. Um, if the supply to the UK is roll on, roll off, can the trailer number be used as the identifier instead of the truck reg? That is for you, Kevin. No. Uh, you must put in the register. You see, the export health certificate, uh, once it reaches, once the uh, fridge or the load goes up on the boat, it's then no longer an EU problem. It's in no longer an EU consignment. So you must put in a proper identification as far as Dublin Port or Rosslare, Belfast or Larne. But once the, the trailer is pulled onto the boat, another fridge, another tractor unit can collect it on the, uh, in the UK, uh, sorry, in, the, in GB, and it's not our problem. It's not the EU's problem, uh, and it's certainly not uh, the department's problem. So you must put on a tractor, uh, uh, the registration of the tractor that's pulling it as far as the port. After that, uh, it can be pulled up onto the trailer, onto the boat, sorry. And it's not our problem after that. Thanks, Gerard. Kevin, so the next question I hear, have here for your organisers is number 26 from Luke Egan. If the application is made missing the truck, reg or container number, seal, will the original cert be issued without those details and handwritten in later? Michael, could you fill oh, that, please? I'm sorry. I don't think you can, you know, Kevin might know the answer to this better than I do. I don't think you can handwrite anything on uh, Trace's certificate. Am I correct, Kevin? Correct, uh, Michael, because in effect, then, uh, say the certificate arrives in the port and uh, one of our inspectors is looking at it there. How is he to know that it was the veterinary inspector in the FBO that actually put it in or that it wasn't one of the, uh, the personnel from the FBO themselves? Exactly. So the security of the certificate is based on on it being completed um, digitally on traces and the only thing that should appear on it is a signature and a stamp. Okay, 27. Michael and Kevin. Um, number 27 is from Stephen O'Keefe. Um, I think we've hit on this um, previously but it, the question is what if the truck collecting the product is not the same as the one leaving the country? So Kevin just spoke on that there. Yeah. Um, so I'll move on to number 28, which is from Vivian Foley. Um, it is, as a manufacturer of an animal-based product, we submit products to our customer in Dublin, who in turn exports to the UK. As a manufacturer of these products, what are our obligations in regards to completing traces in this regard? So, no, Michael, would they, you be able to feel they, that? They have, they have no obligation if the, if the product is is um, dispatched to the UK from a different premises, um, they, they don't have any obligation, as far as I know, to be on traces. I could be wrong about that. It's the, it's the place where the certificate will be generated. 
um, that has to be on traces. Um, so what we would expect there to be traceability information going from the plant of origin to the plant of dispatch um, and depending on the the type of product um, there may be if it incorporates anything from third countries like I mentioned in my if there may be other requirements uh, regarding um, pre-export certification etc. Like slaughter date? Like slaughter date yeah it depends on what it is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> She didn't clarify what the product was, but sorry, Maria. I just like to come in there and just reiterate what, something Michael mentioned before that um, it is very important that everybody along the supply chain keeps good communications with their suppliers and where they're sending it on, so that there's no gaps and that everybody knows who is actually going to apply for which cert and who is not going to apply. I think that's really important um, that uh, while you know several people, so either the FBO or the cold store or the distributor, they can apply for the cert, it is really important that you make sure that you know who exactly is going to do that. Okay. Thank you very much, Maria. Um, one moment now. I'm just going to get to the next question. 29. So the 29 is from Lee O'Keefe. Um, hi, does it matter whether there are several production dates of the same product in the consignment? Uh, therefore, do we just classify per product and not per production date? So, Michael, you can take that because it refers to the certificates, the, the entrance on the actual health charts themselves. Yeah. I, I, now, as far as I, as far as I know, I just opened the. Pre I'm just having a look at the meat preparations certificate here, which would be like if you were certifying sausages. Uh, if we were certifying sausages, so it says species, treatment type, um, the approval number of the premises, the number of packages, and the net weight. So, um, so that's it. It doesn't ask for the production date. Uh, the only dates that are requested in relation to production are the slaughter dates for fresh meat and meat preparation. Now, I will say further down where the vet signs the cert, it asks for the slaughter dates of the meat that's used in the material that makes the meat preparation. So that is, yeah, it's, so it's slaughter dates only. doesn't ask for production dates or production date range. So boning or, um, you know, other manufacturing processes are not uh, requested. Thank you very much, Michael. Okay. Um, question 30 that we have received here is from Luke Egan. Um, I'll feel this because it's it's about the traceability document that we generated. Hi, Luke. Um, no, uh, we don't have any. That was just one that I developed for the purposes of the demonstration, just to make you aware that such documents are needed. But we do not have a template for them. So each FBO, each food business operator will need to create their own. Um, number 31 is from Ryan Sweeney. Sorry, Jared. Sorry, can I just Michael? say something? Also, the the yeah. the table uh, uh, for the products that are going onto the certificate is slightly different on the certificates, uh, the GB certificates, to the example that you showed on the. Um, uh, so there wasn't a. I couldn't see a space for a CN code, for instance. Uh, now, whether that appears on traces or not, I don't know. But it's not on the PDF version of the certificate. So there, they may be. So, so if we did create a template, we'd have to create it to match the certificates that themselves. Um, thank you, Michael. So, question as I said, question thirty-one here is from Ryan Sweeney. It's what happens, and Michael, you will be taking this too. I hope. Um, what happens if the VI enters the production or slaughter date incorrectly in the free text box? Okay, if the if the VI enters you if the VI enters it incorrectly, you're you're assuming then they mistranscribed what came from the food business operator. Uh, if they don't, if if they recognise the error, uh, they can amend it. Kevin will will probably confirm. If they don't recognise it, it may go as it is, you know. And um, if it's signed, it may. Uh, I'll be take. Noticed. 
Okay. That Michael, yeah, because there is a facility on traces. If 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 once a trace, uh, once a cert has been validated, so once you have gone through what I showed you in my presentation, which is the actual generation of the certificate itself, once the certificate is generated on traces, it appears as status valid. However, once it is status valid, it may be replaced. Um, you will have to notify your VI that an error has been identified and then the VI will have the capacity on the TRACES website to copy the CERT as a replacement that replaces the original CERT and uh, replaces with the updated corrected CERT. So the functionality on TRACES does exist to replace an originally produced health certificate. And sorry, uh, the next question I see here is number 32 from uh, John O'Regan. Um, how do we deal with group which loads where one or two pallets may be collected by a truck at a plant? Um, they will then most likely be put on a different truck at the transport depot at marshalling stage, so it is very likely the truck collecting it at the plant won't be the truck bringing the product to the UK. That's another question related to group. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, go ahead, looks Lorna. Like a, it looks like a comment. Yeah, yeah. Let Lorna speak. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's... Um, it depends on, on what the final model or models that we're going to use are, but there are ways that that can be done. Um, and um, it, it, could, it might be possible to steal individual uh, pallets uh, at uh, FBO level, um, and that the health cert would be issued on the basis of that um, seal. And while the truck number might change, the final truck number might change, as I said before, it may be possible to negotiate with uh, GB to accept the IPAS final truck uh, registration number. So, so um, we will clarify all that in due course. Um, I will then move on uh, for the organizers. It's question number 33 from Rita Arthur. Um, Rita asks, is a traceability document required for the secondary process plant? I, I might feel this if you don't mind. First, Michael, you might have more to add. Um, but Rita, the traceability document is required depending on the cert. It, the, the traceability document is just ourselves as staff and staff will only be able to certify a consignment as long as we have all of the information necessary for inclusion on that particular health certificate. The actual health certificate and what information is necessary is very dependent on the actual cert itself. So for that I'd say rec I'd recommend that you familiarize yourself with the certs that you'll be using in your processing plant and then create the documents on that basis. Uh, if you've anything to add there Michael. I just muted myself. The, the, it doesn't matter whether the process is, is primary or secondary. If you're doing, the only time you don't need uh, uh, the traceability we will be looking for for the um, certificate um, accuracy, it relates to origin, uh, treatment, etc. If if that is not uh, available at the secondary process uh, um, and with say third country raw materials have been used, they we will not be able to issue a certificate because that has to be completed on com uh, composite product certificates, meat product certificates. Um, and so if that's the kind of product you're talking about, then if they can't be completed, we won't be able to issue certification for those. So I'm not 100% sure um, of the process you're talking about, but uh, so that kind of, so traceability is, is required under all EU regulations, but specifically in relation to origin and treatments given to the product, we will need to ensure that it complies with the EU regulation um, before it can depart uh, for the UK. Michael, um, one moment now. Sorry, what That's question four. number was I on here? Um, was it 34? 34, 34, sorry, sorry, 34 from Leo Keith. Um, we are an FBO that uses third-party distribution. The consignment goes from our place of production to a transport company who then reloads it on a different truck. How then does that work for us? With difficulty. Very similar to the one that Lorna answered a minute ago. Yes. It's, yeah. uh, it can either be linear or, or consolidation, and we might get a concession to 
to allow it to, to be certified along the way. Uh, then the next question is number 35 received from Fergal Corey. I'll take a part of this, Michael, but then you might have more to add. Fergal asks, what if there is a range of slaughter dates for the meat component? Can the range of dates be added to the traceability documents instead of specific dates? My answer to that would quite simply be yes, unless, Michael, you have anything further. Well, completely agree. You, you put in the earliest date and the latest date. Uh, that's it. That's the date range. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, then uh, number 36 received from Brian Marr. Um, is it the Daffin vet who does the final certificate? Does the FBO need their vet to complete the info before this? Um, if the if the premises is DAFM supervised, it has to be a DAFM vet. If the premises is local authority supervised, it has to be the local authority vet. That's the way it always works. And and if it transfers from one to the other before certification, there may be a need for uh, pre-export certification from one plant to the other. Yeah. Okay, Jared. Thank you very much. Um, number 37, uh, for the organisers, we see from uh, Heidi Van Schaik. Um, will there be a separate FAQ for dairy products and is there a difference for dairy and dairy composites? Uh, first of all, I'll answer the dairy composites question. Uh, dairy composites are included in the composites certificate. Um, uh, as in dairy is one of the animal ingredients that can be used in composite products. So we the, the certificate for dairy is, is, is dairy products only. Composites means plant material combined with animal material. And if there's no plant material, it's not a composite. That's the easiest way to remember that. So it's most likely going to be, if, it's, if it has any plant material, it will be certified from uh, one of our plants on a composite certificate. Um, so, and da dairy, uh, uh, the dairy side are looking after, Peter can, can speak for them, um, are looking after their own certification end, um, so they may well come up with the same idea. So a lot of the, a lot of the ideas will be the same anyway. We, uh, to, to be honest, we've, we've only, the FAQs have been organized from the questions we've received. And we have received little or no requests or questions on the dairy side. So we will create FAQs because that's what they are, frequently asked questions. So we've had very little or no questions on the dairy side. So as soon as we get questions, we'll create an FAQ. But if, but if, if Heidi is, is in, involved in a plant that produces composite products that use dairy as one of the ingredients, it will more than likely be on one of the composite certs and you know there doesn't need to worry about separate anything for dairy yeah okay so 38 jared are you sure um 38 is from uh, thomas salomon um does the health certificate have to be printed and given to the driver yeah essentially at the moment, at the moment. um we have as I said before, yes, the UK, as I said before, the UK uh, expects, certainly from the first of July, that the original will travel with the driver, and we are trying to negotiate that under COVID easement. But that particular requirement is going to create all sorts of issues for everybody. But the fact that the uh, original might have to travel with the with, with the load. We're hoping that the UK will agree to an electronic copy, in other words, a photocopy of the original going with the load. Um, just to come in there as well, just best practice would be, I suppose, that for, from the 1st of April, um, that the, the, um, even if we did get an easement where there is a permanent veterinary presence, um, that the, the original copy would actually go with the load. Um, yeah. We are trying to negotiate COVID easements, as Peter has said, um, and um, we'll let you know um, how we get on with that. Thanks. Thank you, Lorna. Um, for the presenters, it is question 39. I'll feel this because it's been just spoken on. It's from Fergal Corey. 
but dairy composites, uh, it's for composite products, is my understanding that the production dates for the dairy components need to be provided. Can a range of dates be provided on the traceability doc? Um, Fergal, the answer to that is uh, yes, absolutely, they can. So then uh, for number 40 from Ashley and Carolyn, are certs required for samples of products sent via courier? I would imagine so. Maria, you're on mute. Maria, you're, you're muted. Now you're frozen. Okay, sorry. Um, just to say that um, there are some derogations available for particular types of samples. So I would ask that uh, that questioner to send in a specific request to Brexit call at agriculture.gov.ie detailing the uh, the products um, included, and then we can see uh, what might apply in that case. very much Maria. Um, question 41, we actually received two questions at a very similar stage from uh, Trevor Harrison and Sean Lee. It uh, pertains to the same area. Is raw material imported from Northern Ireland considered outside the EU for the process of certification, i.e. Uh, sheep killed, Northern Irish sheep that were killed in a uh, Republic of Irish uh, slaughterhouse? No, they're not. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, Maria, we can. In general, um, uh, the products coming from Northern Ireland uh, can, are in free, can come into the Republic of Ireland and come in free circulation without a health cert and then can be, um, uh, can be included to go out. However, again, more details and specifics of that would need to be provided before we could make a, a final assessment. Okay. And can I, can I add? Um, so, sorry, does, does anybody want to go in there? Yeah, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Michael. Sorry, uh, I, my microphone is misplaced. Um, the, you have to be careful about, uh, like in general, the Northern Ireland is part of the um, single market and the SPS zone of the EU at the moment. So there's freedom of movement, but there's also freedom to some extent of movement between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And if you are importing, uh, with say, uh, sheep for slaughter, uh, some of those sheep may have been um, born and reared in the Great Britain and transferred to Northern Ireland or cattle. So there are, it's not a, you know, given uh, that you can do that. But in general, there is freedom at the moment. There is no requirement for certification north and south, to north to south or south to north in general, except where um, there are additional requirements over and above EU requirements. Okay. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, the next question here is number 42 for the organisers. It's fr received from Aidan Dunn. Um, does all product have to be chilled to minus or frozen to minus 18 to enter GB? Michael, if you could take that. You're, mu you're muted, Michael. <laughs> Sorry. That is limited at the moment to minced meat from all of the fresh meat species like fresh beef, minced beef, minced pork, minced lamb. Um, that, so so that, that's one component and all meat preparations, products that, sorry, meats that come under the definition of meat preparations, which includes things like sausages, chicken Kievs, chicken nuggets, with, if they're raw or a component is raw in the middle, they are meat preparations they must be frozen. Also burgers, of course, uh, with ingredients in them. So they must be frozen. It does not apply to uh, meat products, um, some of which may be even cooked to, so that they can be stored at ambient temperature. So it's, it's, it's minced meat of all the species and meat preparations. Okay, Jared. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, the next question we received is from uh, number 43 for the organisers. It was received from Hazel Delaney. Um, if a departure time is specified on Traces Classic, but that time is not met by the transport company, either due to a delay in collection or breakdown, and the time and traces will be incorrect, how will this affect approval at the next check with authorities? Kevin, if you could please, or Maria, come in on that one. Maria? 
Sorry there. I'm afraid I don't know. Um, we can take that back, but I think that'll be um, a question for uh, for how the uh, UK authorities process the um, you know the documents and do the documentary checks on the other side. But I'll take that back. Thanks. Thank you very much, Maria. Um, the question number 44 for the organisers was received from Jerry McNally. Um, it's burgers with seasoning and meat content with meat content over 50% are meat products, or sorry, are meat preparations and not composite products. Is that correct, Michael, if you would be able to answer that? Absolutely. The, um, the seasonings that are used in, in um, burgers is are regarded, and in other products as well, are regarded the final product is a meat preparation yes it has to have a uh, um, plant material not seasonings they've come from plants but they're not regarded as plant material what they're talking about in plant material is 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 uh, things like pasta and bread mainly but there are other things so uh, but the seasonings that go into burgers just make them meat preparations very much Michael um, the next question sir I don't have who submitted this but are, are there transit certificates for all meat commodities and can these be shared sir I'm not sure there are um, there are transit certificates for all meat commodities uh, the individual um, all of the fresh meats and minced meats are, are have a single transit certificate it's called the fresh meat transit certificate the Meat preparations have a separate one, the meat products have a separate one, and the composite products have a separate one. Uh, these are all on the DEFRA website, uh, and you know I think the link is there somewhere up on the um, DAFM website, but they're all up there. Um, so there's no, uh, it's just figuring out which is which, because they have other certs mixed in and out through them, uh, but the, we're, we when we're looking for our certs, we look for you know, composite products to the e to the uh, from the EU transit from the EU, um, and that's so. There, but there are a lot of certs up there on the website. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, the next question is number forty-six for the organisers. It's if the consignment for a customer that has minced meat and meat preparations, the consignment must have separate health certs on traces. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, correct. There are two different commodities. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, um, if, number forty-seven. Just well, say, if 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 you learn nothing else from the presentation I gave earlier, it's to try to at least categorize your what you produce into the correct commodity type, because that will make life easier for all of us. But for some pl plants, we already know them because of the approval of the plant, but for other plants that are unknown to us, we may not be as uh, sure what they actually produce. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, the next question here, number 47 for the organisers, it was received from uh, Cormac Healy. Uh, it's Peter, the FAQ document largely rules out a requirement for a pre-export cert unless raw material comes from a third country. If raw material came from another EU member state, is it still the case that the pre-export certificate is not required? That is a tricky question because if the raw material is meat uh, and the, the slaughter date for that product may be required, which would not necessarily be available. Is that correct, Michael? Yeah, um, it, de it, it depends on how, how this information is going to be transmitted from A to B. Uh, but it's, it, we, like, we try to keep it as loose as possible in relation to pre-export certification, not to make it um, you know, written in stone yet until we see how it works. The, the main issue is apart from the slaughter dates, which may be transmissible through traceability information, but there are other issues in relation to th especially third country imports moving from one plant to another within Ireland where information must uh, be either move with them or be certified from one plant to another. But it's, it's, we've left that open a little bit because we don't want to overimpose uh, pre-export certification um, from one plant to another, uh, especially if, if EU compliance is the only thing that uh, is required. So,
Michael. Um, one moment. Now we were uh, question number forty-eight um, was received from Fergal Curry. It's do expert health certificates and common health entry documents for non-EU materials need to be uploaded onto traces? I think that would be related to the traceability, not the EHCs or the CHEDS. The CHEDS is for documents entering the EU from a third country. But do the traceability documents need to be uploaded on traces for non-EU materials, Michael? Uh, yeah, and that may include the a copy of the EHC. If somebody is using, um, you know, Brazilian beef or Thailand chicken or whatever in their process, uh, in order to satisfy the certification requirements, we would want to see that it was legitimately imported into the EU. And the proof of that is by the EHC, uh, a copy of, we don't see the original, it's held at the border inspection post, and a copy of the CHED. So uh, they, I think if there's imported material from third countries used as an ingredient in a product, those should be, those documents should be a minimum um, available. And I have said that in the, in the guidance to our staff regarding certification for imported products from third countries, they should be looking for EHCs and CHEDs. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, the next question is number 49. I'll feel this myself unless somebody else has something to add. It's, uh, it's, is Traces NT only for transit to France from ROI using the UK land bridge? So currently, yes. yes, the primary function of Traces NT is for the generation of common health entry documents which are required if you're transiting UK as a land bridge. Um, but as we said, it is actually of vital importance that every food business operator register themselves on NT so that they may be on the NT database once that is transposed to the British authorities. Um, then number 50, the question, sorry, I don't know who has submitted Jared, this. Jared, I'd like to get in there. Jared, any... sorry, can I get, Jared, sorry? I'd like to get in there. Jared, I'd like to get, I'd like to get in there on that question about the land bridge to France. Okay, the land bridge to the Netherlands and that land bridge to Belgium does not require the pre-notification on the shed. Okay, it's That's only to France point. and the other countries. Um, yeah, okay, so Netherlands and Belgium. Um, the transit system, the revenue transit system can be used as the pre-notification. We successfully achieved a derogation from the Commission and Belgium and the Netherlands came on board with us with that. Uh, France were unable to because their systems were already developed. So I just wanted to point that out there, okay? Sorry, and thank you very much, for Maria, for that inclusion. Um, one second now, number 50 for the organisers. It's uh, Is there any new costs for food business operators to get certs created and certified? None so far. Not at the moment, no. Thank you very much, Michael and Peter. Um, then the next question here is number 51. Is, is a frozen pizza, or sorry, a frozen pizza, is that a composite or not? Base is cooked separately to the toppings, and I don't have who submitted that. Yeah, it, it, de it depends, okay, because you're the de there's a small bit of detail missing here. Is the base shipped separately uh, to, the, to the topping, or are, are they frozen together? If they're frozen together, it's a composite product. If the topping is all has um, product of animal origin in it like obviously it will have cheese and possibly other materials so it's a composite product um, and uh, is more than likely going to need a, a composite product certificate which Michael so question tw uh, 52 for the organizers was received from Orla Sherry um, if you do not have a DAFA member base at your site, what is the procedure in retrieving an act, the actual cert from them? Yeah, that, that is, at the moment, with COVID easement, we are hoping that an electronic copy of the cert will be emailed to the, to the site. So um, that would mean that, but if the, if the UK are going to insist that the original cert travels with the load, that is going to be a problem. So we do not have a, a mechanism for that. It may be that the FBO might have to collect the site from the DAFM person who signs it. Thank you, Peter. Um, this was asked previously, but number 53 is from Olivia Herman. 
Peter, you might take this again, but is will vets have to physically check the loads as well as doing their work on traces? Um, it may be that um, we will verify a percentage of loads, but we will not be verifying all loads. We will we'll probably be verify, do a physical check on some loads, uh, depending on resources and depending on what we can do. But it may be that we will do some checks on some loads, but in general, I wouldn't see that it's a based, it's a system-based approach. Thank you, Peter. Um, number 54 was received from Stephen O'Keefe. Will pre-export certs be required for product moving between sites to be consolidated on one truck? No, we, w we won't be using pre-export certs for, for uh, group hitch uh, or consolidation, no. Um, they, they will only be used um, for product moving from one plant to another, which may require storage or further processing. But if they're if necessary at all, they may not be. Um. Thank you, Michael. Um, the next question then was received from there was there was actually it was three people asked around the same time it was Neil Finlayson. Uh, John Leahy and Katrina Cahill all had the question uh, that was, what is the expected turnaround time for the EHC, the Export Health Certificate, um, to be issued? Can it be done in a few hours? Again, we would um, be doing our best to get it as issued as, as quickly as possible. I don't see um, if all the details are correct. The more, the more work on the search that can be done in a timely manner, so that if you know, for instance, that today is Thursday, if you know that next Tuesday you are sending a load and you know what's on that load and you have, you can then upload the, the, the details of that cert so that can be checked and verified that the, and then it will be very quickly can be signed once the final details are ready. So the, the more work or the more checking that can be done by us be, before the actual load. If, you, if, if, if a food business uploads all the details that, um, just at the last minute, it's going to take some time to actually check to do the verification. So the more stuff that can be done prior to that, the, the quicker the search will be issued. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, the next question then is number 56 in the chat. Uh, it was received from Maria Duffy. Hi, what will the process be for consignments travelling via the UK onwards to another third country? I can only tell you about certification requirements, okay? If they're going to another third country, they will need they will need two certs from here. They will need a transit cert from the, U, or the UK. They will need whatever the third country export certificate is for the market they're going to. Uh, in relation to um, CHED and Traces NT, I, I don't know the answer to that. Right. Gerard, if the, uh, the load is transiting Britain, for, uh, going to uh, another EU country, um, if it's going to France, it will need an EHC. If it's going to the Netherlands or Belgium, it doesn't. But if it's it going into a port... If, it, if it's going into a port uh, in um, if it's going into a port in France, those would be as follows: Cherbourg, Dunkirk, uh, Calais. Um, if it's going into one of those ports, it will need the export cert, the intra-trade cert, and the EHC. If it's uh, and if it's going to a third country, then it will be as Michael previously said. Just say. Thank you very much, Kevin. Just, just on that, just to, you will also have to use the the revenues transit system for that. Just to be just to be clear on that. I know we're talking about health certs today, but just to remind you that there are revenue and customs obligations on these as well. Okay. Thanks very much, Maria. Um, number fifty-seven was received from Phil Smith. Um, what is the latest time frame that a health cert can be applied for? So, what is the latest time that a health cert can be applied for? Um, that's it, it, once a cert is applied for, 
a cert is applied for. And, but it would take time then for the Department of Agriculture to do the Department of Agriculture Veterinary Inspector to do the traceability and to do, to do the traceability checks and to then to sign off on the on the on the cert. So if you're expecting if you have the truck loaded and the lorry driver is revving his his, his cab, uh, it could take two hours, it could take half an hour, it, it could take a whole day. I don't know. It's I mean it's as long as a piece of string. That's a really difficult one to but as as I said before, the more stuff you can get in ahead of time the easier it will be to deliver certs back in a timely manner. Thank you, Peter. Um, the number 58 was received from Swati Charaja. Um, so the load for the UK needs to be pre-notified to DAFM for sealing. Peter, I think you could take that because no, I don't believe it does. No, it, 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 it doesn't. Um, Seals are something that are under negotiation at the moment. Uh, um, we would expect that if you seal the load, um, you would upload a photograph of the a photograph of the seal in position, is, which is what we have been using. And you upload the seal in position, and that's uploaded to uh, traces, and we can then put that include that number uh, on the search on the EHC. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, question number 59 was received from Tim Coughlin. Um, what party is responsible for uploading two traces? Is it the consignee or the shipping depot or the consigner? Who is responsible for uploading the information onto the traces website? Kevin, I believe if you could come into that. Oh, sorry. But whoever would not, it, it, like, I know, I know a lot of the um, participants here are not used to having to certify anything. Those who are used to certifying will know that it's the person who who needs the cert uploads. Um, yeah. So it it will often be if it's a if it's a cold store it'll be the cold store themselves. If it's a food business operator that's dispatching and also the consignor it will be the consignor. It will never be the consignee as far as I'm. Aware. No, Michael is cor you are correct in that. It will always be the consignee and the consignor. Or the, or the agent who is doing it on behalf of the consignor. Okay. Thank you very much, Kevin and Michael. Um, number 60 was received from Colin Doherty. Um, it's for moving dairy products, is registration on trays is needed, despite the fact that ESA AHCs are being created on the Department of Agriculture Certifications uh, Service. Can I come in on that there, um, uh, Jared? Um, just to say that I just want to go back over because I think um, at the start, uh, some of uh, because of poor connectivity, some of the uh, some of the things that I said were, were kind of um, weren't clear. But just we've been informed by the commission that um, GB will use the list of approved establishments drawn by down by the commission from Traces NT to verify the exporting establishment is approved. So it's now an urgent requirement for each approved establishment to register themselves on Traces NT. So in the case of dairy, um, it, it will be important that the um, establishment that the product is coming from is registered on Traces NT because GB will use the list that the Commission give them at the end of March and the list the Commission are going to use or whatever is registered on Traces NT. So just, it's really important for everybody to know that there's, there's, there are a few things that are, <coughs> that are required. Um, you need to be registered on Traces NT because if you're not, when you go to um, apply for permission to the IPAS system to um, notify them of a, an impending import into GB, it may be blocked. It will be blocked because the um, if your establishment is not on Traces NT on that list that the Commission draw down. So I would urge everybody to register on Traces NT as a matter of urgency. We're going to um, uh, issue a trader notice to that effect, 
um, as we'll have a how-to guide. Um, and there is a PowerPoint presentation on the gov.ie website. Um, uh, it's module number three, which goes through the registration process. And again, it's very important that you have the exact name and address of the establishment, the approval number, the postcode, and the EORI number um, when you're doing that registration. So that's in relation to Traces NT. For the dairy side then, the DCPS system is going to be used to generate the certificates, not um, Traces. So um, registration on Traces Classic as an approved establish establishment will not be as important. Um, um, but all other exporters um, should register on tra must register on Traces um, Classic if you want an EHC, and you must uh, register users so that you can generate uh, the um, consignment on Traces Classic. So just to be clear, there are three things really here: Traces Classic as an approved establishment, Traces Classic as a user, and Traces NT. Um, so that GB, you, so that you appear as an approved establishment on the GB list um, when you make your um, IPASS notification. So, um, thank you. Does anybody else want to come in there? No, other than to be 100% clear, every food business in the country must be registered on Traces NT, whether you're dairy or meat. And just just another aside, just another small aside to that. Uh, some of the dairy group may, depending, uh, um, be, need to be registered on Traces Classic if you are exporting certain types of composite products. But we will clarify all that. Thank you very much, Lorna and Peter. Um, question number 61 for the organisers was received from Brendan Carty. Um, who, and this is again for you, Michael, and it's related to groupage. Um, who does the final certificate in relation to groupage where the factory of origin is not the one sending out the produce for final inspection? Yeah, I, in, in general, I would expect the um, certificate to be generated at the point of departure or at the point of loading. Um, but it depends on the on the groupage model that's being used. So you know there are flexibilities there. Um, uh, of course, that we've heard from Lorna already. Um, so it may be possible for the certificate to be uh, completed, or multiple certificates to be completed along the way. Um, so there may not be such thing as a final certificate. Um, but if a product, we we'll say that goes to a Cold store from multiple locations, it'll, the certificate will almost certainly be generated in the cold store. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, then the que next question is number 62 for the organizers. It was received from Olivia Harmon. Um, will vets be available to check traces over the weekend as this particular FBO has uh, consignments and loads going out 24 7? Yeah, that is a very contentious issue at the moment. Um, as you know, the Department of Agriculture works office hours. We work, um, in general, uh, between 8 and 6 in the evening. Um, and we know food businesses work 24-7. And we will come some way to meet the 24-7 requirement, but we won't be going all the way. So um, there will have to be changes. Uh, there will be changes on our side, but there will have to be some changes on the food business sites as well. Like I've heard of stories of loads going out at two o'clock in the morning. We will not have people on duty 24 hours a day to certify loads at two o'clock in the morning. So that's just that's just the reality. Okay. Sixty-three. Thank you, Peter. Sixty-three from Luke Egan was um, multiple consignments delivered to a distribution centre. Well, where a load is consolidated and then goes to GB. Uh, it's again, it's our pre-export certs needed and where does the final cert issue from? Michael, I think you've covered that, but if you just want to reiterate. It's, uh, it's obviously, it's a, it's a concern. Um, it, it, it almost, if, it, if, if it's active delivery to a consolidation center, then there will probably be no pre-export certs or pre-movement certs required. And the final cert will be created at the distribution center. But it depends on whether that centre is a department-controlled premises or not. Um, 
from our point of view, it may be controlled by the uh, local authority or the HSE. So, um, but in general, there won't be pre-export search required. Thank you, Michael. Um, number 64 for the organizers was received from uh, Saif Duggan. Um, it's, where do I get more information on the traceability requirement for a cooked ham product? Um, you will I think you're going on mute, Michael. Uh, as I say, that's a great question, but it's too much for here. Um, you, there, isn't, there isn't any published information on the traceability. Your traceability information you have yourself. Um, you have the origin of all the, of, of the, the, the baked the, uh, ham or the raw pig meat that went into that ham, where it came from. So when you, a VI is being asked to certify your product, they will ask you for your traceability information. And if that includes imported material, you will have to show where it came from. Uh, because that's what the CERT requires. And if there were any third countries involved, um, you will have to have treated that ham in accordance with the requirements for the, that third, third country. So uh, this isn't written down anywhere. Um, you, should, you should look at the, um, the certificate for meat products and the legislation uh, that covers meat products, which is... Um, I can't remember the number of it now, but anyway, it's there in the, written on the top of the certificate, and that legislation uh, tells you what treatments are required for each product. Traceability is, you, you should have that already, that's an EU requirement, um, you know, where it came from, uh, one step forward, one step back. Okay, um, I, I just note it's at 12.58, uh, so we only have two or three minutes left. So we will try to get as many, but any questions we don't get to, we will answer them by text, and they'll be all up in the FAQs. Thank you, Peter. Um, I'll just take one here very quickly, because it was received from Breach Hughes. Um, it was about the A marker on Traces Classic. Uh, Breach, for any, if you log on to Traces Classic and your FPO has not been updated with the A marker, email traces-vifis-reg at agriculture.gov.ie notifying us that that is needed to be done and we will get to that in due course. And next question was from Orla Sherry, number 66. Do we need any movement certs to accompany products from the EU state into Ireland, which will be destined to GB for further processing? Uh, in general, again, uh, no, um, but it depends on the origin of the raw material. If it's coming from an EU state but originally came from a third country, uh, it would have to comply with all the third country uh, requirements as well. So that may be a an issue that the VI will raise when they're um, looking, for or looking for background information. Uh, so it depends. Uh, we don't want to say no, uh, but in general, there's no requirement for certification from EU member states between EU member states unless there are uh, issues that over and above EU rules. Thank you, Michael. Um, then number 67 was received from Brendan Dixon. It's um, Maria, you might need to come in on this one. It's does the Irish FBO or does the FBO need to be registered with IPAFs? No. Sorry, I couldn't find my unmute button there. Um, the uh, No, they don't. A, the GB authorities, the UK authorities, would prefer that it's somebody resident in GB who is registered at IPAPS and who does the pre-notifications on IPAPS. Um, if there isn't a GB importer who is in a position to do this, they have requested that uh, the EU exporters use a GB agent, that they acquire an agent to work on their behalf. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and then number 68 was received from Don O'Brien. Is all health marked beef produced in an approved premises eligible for export to GB? Um, the bottom line is, is yes, it is, um, because there's no um, exclusions. GB isn't, doesn't have Irish, Ireland only, or 
you know, it, it, so they are accepting, but there may be additional certification requirements for, for with the imported animals. But in in general, all health marked beef uh, or all health marked meat uh, produced in an EU approved premises is eligible for export to GB. Thanks very much, Michael. And then we might have one more time for one more question or two. Um, I see here from Ryan Sweeney, I can take this one. Ryan, is if all if I set up all my customers on Traces Classic, will they be transferred or available on T and NT? Ultimately, the idea is that Classic will be transferred, but not in any time soon. So for now, no, is the answer. So if you register all your customers on Classic, they will not be available on NT. You will need to set them up on both systems. And then finally, number seven of March, will the vets produce an EHC for product arriving in the 1st of April? When is the cutoff point? For product produced on the 31st of March, will vets produce expert health certificates as it will arrive in the UK? Um, it's from the 1st of April. If, you, if the product arrives from the 1st of April, it requires an EHC. That's the bottom line. It doesn't matter when it was produced. Yeah, no. thanks Peter. And Michael, and then I suppose the final one can be uh, from Pat Doherty, number 71. Will the department, will the, will there be adequate, adequate even Department of Agriculture, Agriculture resources available from the 1st of April 20, or 21? Um, that's, um, we don't know exactly what the demand will be or how quickly the our, our vets will be able to deliver um, certification. In other words, we don't know what the quality of them is. There's so many imponderables, that's a very difficult question to answer. For argument's sake, if all the information coming from food businesses is 100% correct, um, we may have adequate resources. But if it's not, we may not. So it's, um, the, the department has given a commitment that uh, over time um, the adequate resources will be put in place, depending on demand. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Um, do we have time for any more questions, or are we closing now the session? Uh, no, just there's, um, just take another two questions. Okay, thank you very much, Peter. Um, I received one here. It's about the process on traces um, from Alison Lynch. If using a logistics company via the airport to UAE, is the same process followed? Um, Kevin, would you come in on that one? No, it's not. No, this, the, the, sorry, Kevin. Certification, is... cer certification to the UAE does not use traces. Um, uh, so we, we already have catered for um, the air uh, freight from here to the UAE uh, via Dublin Airport. Um, so we're, we're already doing that. Uh, it's nothing to do with traces at the moment. Traces, is only, for, traces is only for use for certs for the UK. Thank you very much, Michael and Peter, and apologies there for my incorrect assumption. Um, number 73 then was from Vaughan Rooney. Um, for the local health authorities, when will they get information on how to obtain their health certs? We have already trained the local authority on how to use traces, the local authority vets. Um, the, so the, um, there are a limited number of food businesses that will be exporting from local authority that are under the supervision of the local authority. So um, the local authority vets will be and getting themselves on traces in the next while, in the next few days, and uh, hopefully they will be able to then come the 1st of April, export and produce certs from traces. Okay, um, just if we take two more questions and then we will wrap it up. Okay, thank you, Peter. And so number 74 was received from John Buckley. It's do group which companies or tram, uh, sorry, transport companies need to register on traces? Transport companies do, yes. Thank
thank you and very much, Kevin. Sorry, Peter. I so you want just to... want to go ahead. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to know for what purpose do they need to register on traces? As in, do we expect transport companies to request export health certs, or do we expect the re the request to come from the food business only? And I think, Kevin, you're saying the transport companies do need to register on traces in that animal transport companies also need to be registered on traces, but that's outside the scope of export health certification. Sorry, would I um, have I complicated the issue there? Sorry. No, you haven't. For, for, for classic traces, uh, transport companies, we simply, uh, we have to put them up with who the transporter is. So they need to be registered on classic transporters you will remember on the uh, tab where I went into and filled in the transport company, and they, we put up their uh, the registration of their vehicle. On Traces NT, it is mandatory that they are up there. We have to designate whether they're type one or type two uh, commercial vehicles, and we have to put up the registrations of the tractor units. Thank you, Maria. Okay, um, Sean Dunn is, how long do you think yeah, it would have clarification on whether the original certs or copy certs would have to go with you? At the moment, we are trying to negotiate with the UK authorities for COVID easement, and that will certainly finish on the 1st of July. So after that, um, we don't know what's going to happen after the 1st of July. That's the honest answer. We don't know. And the final question, coffee beans. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the coffee final beans, question was received beans. from... They don't have four legs and breed. Yeah, coffee beans are not product of animal origin. So I'm not sure whether... Uh, I'm not an expert on whether they need anything. So... I think um, 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 all regulated plants and plant products will also need a phytosanitary search. So um, uh, I can see and find out if the, if the, that is one of the regulated products that will need a phytosanitary search to go to the UK or to GB. Okay. Okay. Listen. Um, Every question uh, we get an answer. Yeah. Thank you very much.